Today we are in Kachuta in the Guruvi area where one of our pastors, Pastor Kukotsi, ministers an incredible ministry that is taking place in this area. Uh, we came here last night uh, with one of our board members as well as one of our senior pastors to just see the work and worship with them, witness and just provide a little bit of uh, support and see what he goes through as he ministers in this area. There's just so much vast opportunities for growth as well as for expansion of the message of the cross in this region. He passes two of our churches in this area as well as does devotions like this morning he did devotions at two of the local schools and here's another one as well where he ministers just investing in the youth for today which has been very very incredible. A few years back, we did some reports on the different projects that our pastors were engaged in. Unfortunately, due to distance, we are not able to get to Pastor Kugotsu's place. This place is about three hours to four hours away from where we live. And the roads are honestly not the best, so you do need a reliable vehicle to be able to move from Mangura or Doma to this area. Fortunately enough, yesterday we were able to make the journey. So today we are in the goat pen where he takes care of his goats. He started this project a few years back and it has obviously grown as you can see. Uh, he also has cows that he takes care of. So we're just going to ask him a few questions so we can uh, catch a glimpse of what he goes through, his goals, his motive and what he benefits from. But to begin with, maybe we can just start talking about church. Basarangwari, how is it going for this? Um, yesterday, first of all, we walked for about an hour and a half to go to baptism yesterday after one of the services. Uh, there were some people were being baptized because of this uh, dry season. It is very hard to find a nice reservoir to uh, baptize people. So we had to make a journey about an hour and a half through the mountains, which was a little bit painful, I would admit. But how has been the work in Kachuta? You seem a little bit isolated because you are very far from all the churches that we partner with here. How has it been and how are you doing it? What are the cons, the pros, the blessings, the challenges that you are facing uh, from the church side? Oh, well, um, uh, besides uh, that, uh, it seems as if I'm alone, but indeed I'm not alone because uh, my fellow pastors and other members uh, usually visit me here and there because of distance and uh, they are supporting me but uh, they don't come here as often as they expect but uh, what I know is God himself is doing the, the work personally mm -hmm. and um, concerning the, the work uh, of the Lord or concerning how the churches are going uh, I know that I'm facing challenges here and there, uh, bumps and potholes along the way. But especially uh, as for this year, uh, we all know that people are relying on farming, but unfortunately uh, the rainfall pattern was no longer reliable. So almost everyone is starving from hunger. But so, and that is also uh, affecting church attendance finally. So other members are sporadically coming and they are coming interchangeably uh, this Sunday we have other members and the next Sunday we have other members but uh, finally uh, the work of the Lord is no longer dying the church is still living still uh, functioning and uh, there is also another challenge uh, of church projects we have been expecting to start uh, certain projects as church but the source was uh, the field but it all uh, was compromised because of uh, unreliable rainfall pattern so we are financially down as church but uh, what I know is uh, for this coming uh, season if it is going to be well with us if we are going to receive uh, very good rains, then we are going to accomplish whatever we are expecting to do as a church. And uh, as for the churches, what I'm uh, with is that all the ministries in the church are balanced so that as pastor, uh, my, burden, my burden is enlightened because the youth ministry is functioning, uh, the Sunday school is there, alive and functioning as well. 
the men's ministry and the women's ministry is there functioning as well. And also the leaders, um, I delegate the church leaders, so they are there to support me, uh, to share the burden with me. They are doing the, because I discipled them. So they are currently like me. So they are doing the same job that I am doing. So this is uh, a bit uh, facilitating the work that I'm doing as church. Okay, and, and I know one of the things that you mentioned when we were talking yesterday, when you talk about the fluctuations in attendance, okay. people is because they are going and doing some mining so they can enhance survival. They have, we've had a terrible season, last season of rainfall, so a lot of people rely on agriculture, like you were saying, on farming crops. So that did not go so well last season. So many people are having to go out and look for gold, uh, gold panning and get some money so they can enhance survival. But also another thing that has been very encouraging to see, the last time I came to Kachuta was maybe three years ago. And that's when we launched one of the churches here. Uh, the people that were there um first of all i think there has been a spiritual growth as well as even a growth in attendance in numbers uh, do you see that and is there anything specific that you are seeing that is uh pushing for the spiritual growth for the members as well as the numbers because there were there were a lot of people at the boat services we attended yesterday than has been in the past oh, of couple course, years yes. and so of course, forth. Yes. Okay, uh, concerning the, the growth of the church, of course, there is a big difference. Uh, the last time we came here, uh, people were something like uh, around 35 people, but uh, for right now, uh, there are more than 70 people. So we can see that uh, quantitatively, the church is growing. So um, turning to the spiritual side, I can see that people are, are growing daily because uh, we have a lot of people who were uh, totally unable to, to pray, mm -hmm. but uh, for right now, they can make prayer. They can do prayer, they are praying. Even the kids are praying to their God. Yes. Um, and uh, even on the area of fasting, people uh, are knowing the essence of fasting, the importance of fasting. They are fasting but they were no longer doing it before so spiritually i can see that people are growing and even uh the contribution that they are rendering to the community they are doing uh, the community mission work they are helping a lot of people outside there uh, giving uh, gifts uh supplying things to the orphans uh, to the grown-ups of the community so i can see that uh, spiritually people are indeed growing and and just to talk about the spiritual growth uh, <laughs> A few days back, he did send us a video that uh, the Sunday schoolers and the youth came together and they looked for firewood as well as uh, fetch some water for one of our community elderly lady who is unable to do those things. That has been incredible to watch. And also yesterday, one of the things that really also impressed me, that made me really happy, uh, which is not that important, but it's important that it made God happy, I'm sure. When it was time for offering, we did see that it wasn't all about money for both services. Mm, yes, of course. I saw the youth, I saw the Sunday schoolers mm, bring mm, in mm, different things. Some people bringing in drinks, some, somebody brought soap, some of the youth brought like textbooks, yes, and yes. some did bring money. Yes. I know money is very scarce in mm. this, this uh, community. Okay. How have you managed to help people realize that you don't only give money, you know, there are other ways that you can also give to the Lord. And have you seen that make a difference? Uh, so that was directly from the Word of God. Uh, when Luke chapter 16, verse 1, 2, God mentioned that give according to how you prosper. Mm -hmm. So I made it clear to the people that whatever you have, just bring it to the house of God. Okay. Yes. So that's, that's been incredible. And just to see the amount of discipleship yesterday, uh, one, the last service we attended, one of the elders was actually the one who preached on protection, on how God protects and how we need his protection as believers. Well, really everybody needs his protection. So it's been actually awesome to see some of the people that we knew from the past that most of them, some of them had no 
uh, church background, mm, but course. they are now taking the baton. They are stepping up, like he's saying, they yes. are disciples yeah. who are actually leading the church. Mm. So it's been a great, great, great journey and to see the growth. Uh, we have people who support us, who partner with us, not only financially, but also, you know, prayerfully. Yes. Is there, are there any other things besides, you know, we mentioned things with financial issues, we mentioned hunger. Are there some other prayer requests that you have from working with the two churches that we work with, the three schools that you minister in, are there any areas that you need prayer in as well as importantly as well your family are there any other ways that we could partner with you through prayer okay uh the very first thing is uh we continually need your prayers uh especially this thing of evangelizing we still have uh, a lot of areas that we're intending to reach out so we cannot make it ours, on our own so we still need your prayers to help us so that we can uh, reach uh, every person uh, so that God himself is going to do it for us. So keep on praying for us on that uh, area so that whenever we go out, people are going to hear us out. Um, and also, we, we also know that uh, in this area, we are mingled, we have we are a lot of people, some are political minded, they, are, they have nothing to do with God. They, they, they don't even say yes to whatever, uh, some, anything that has something to do with God. So we sometimes face resistance, especially in times of elections, whenever uh, the rallies are in progress, we, we face uh, certain resistances. So we also need prayers because uh, during those uh, times, some members uh, do not come to church. Mm. Yes, so we still need your, your, your prayers so that uh, we everything is going to flow so small. Okay. How about your family? Is there anything we could lift you up in prayer, family on the family side? Okay, okay. Yeah, of course, yes, because I know that uh, before I go out or before we go out uh, with my wife uh, to lead the people of God outside there. I know that uh, the first church is our uh, is our own our own family so we personally uh, need uh, prayers so that uh, us you know we are human beings we sometimes face challenges uh, sometimes we don't uh, get well with uh, family members so we also need prayers because they say something which can uh, discourage us uh, so we also need prayers. Okay, thank you. And uh, Pastor Kugotzi has a wife and two children. The wife has been very, very hospitable to us. You know, cook for us, put some water for taking bath for us, and it's just been amazing. It's been an incredible journey here. So the goats turning to the goats. How many goats do we have now? Uh, like how many? Yeah, they are put four. Forty-four goats. Four, That's four, yeah. awesome. Yes, yes. That's really awesome. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, for thank four. you, thank you and, very uh, much. Recently, six were attacked by hyena. Oh, yes, yeah, oh. yes. Uh, so, currently, nice. what they are for. All right, well, yeah. thank you. Some boots up.